Okay, so we're going to continue looking at projectile motion and in this video we're going to really look at the math of projectile motion, how basically we describe projectile motion using physics and maths. This video will focus a little bit on the theory and then in part C we'll go through some example problems that apply this theory. Okay, these notes I've sort of followed the order of the subject outline, but in this case I'm actually going to talk about the second thing I've got here before I talk about the first thing. So we've talked about the fact that the um, gravity only acts on the vertical component of our velocity and that no force acts on the horizontal component of the velocity. So we like to consider those things separately to analyse this. Um, so what we need to be able to do is that if we're given the actual total velocity is what we call resolve it into its horizontal and its vertical components. So that basically we do using some trigonometry. So if we think about, let's say this angle here is theta and what we know is that sine theta from our knowledge of trigonometry is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so sine theta equals v v over v if we rearrange that by timesing both sides by v and I'll flip sides across we get that the vertical component is equal to the velocity times by sine theta so if we know the initial velocity, basically its size and the angle, we can work out the vertical component. Okay. We can do a similar thing where we think the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine theta equals VH over V. If we rearrange that, we get VH is equal to V times cos theta. Okay, so the next thing we need to be able to do is, given the initial velocity of the projectile, which is V, calculate the vertical component of velocity at any instant. So how do we do that? Well, if we know the initial velocity, we now know how to work out the initial vertical velocity, which is what we did just down below in the blue. Now, obviously, we could also work out the horizontal velocity, but that won't change. However, how will the vertical velocity change? Well, it will be affected by gravity. So our vertical velocity at any instant, which is this here, will be given by whatever our initial vertical velocity was, plus whatever acceleration acts on it, which is usually gravity, which acts at 9.8 meters per second downwards, times by the time that it acted for. I will ex we'll look at an example problem of this in the next video, looking at some example problems, so you'll see this in action. Okay, so the next thing we need to be able to work out is the time of flight of a projectile and also the range of the projectile. Now, time of flight is probably, in a sense, the most tricky. We don't get given on our formula sheet an obvious formula that lets us work out the time of the flight to the time of flight. But what we do no, um, we should really remember this from our year 10 and 11 science, maybe even earlier, is we know that acceleration is equal to the final velocity, which in year 12 we just indicate by V, minus the initial velocity, which we use V0 this year, divided by time. And we can hopefully rearrange that formula fairly easily to work out time if we know the final and the initial velocity and the acceleration. So we can do that by timesing 
both sides by T to get rid of the T on the bottom there. And then to get rid of the A on this side, we divide both sides by A. Sorry, I didn't quite cancel out in the right order, but I think you should be able to follow that. So that leaves us with time equals V minus V0 divided by A. You also could have got that from rearranging the formula, which is on your formula sheet, which is V equals V0 plus A times T. I won't go through that one, but... Needless to say, that one has come from rearranging that one, so we can go sort of backwards and forwards fairly easy, rearranging all three of those. Now, the other formula that you might need to use to work out time of flight comes from this formula here for displacement, which is in is on your formula sheet. And hopefully you've used previously for working out the displacement of an accelerating object. Now, in most cases where we use this, we're dealing with a case where we're launching a projectile where the initial horizontal, the initial vertical component of the velocity is zero. So we're either dropping something, so its initial velocity is zero, or if we're launching something horizontally, so we're throwing something horizontally or kicking something horizontally, the horizontal component is equal to the total velocity, the vertical component is zero. And we can basically, that term there equals zero, and we can forget about that. So that means that the displacement, and in this case we're worried about the vertical displacement, is equal to a half times a times t squared. So if we know the vertical displacement, Remember, gravity only acts in the vertical direction. We can calculate the time of flight by rearranging this formula. So to get rid of the half, we times both sides by 2. To get rid of the a, we divide both sides by a. To get rid of the t squared, we take the square root of both sides. And that leaves us with, so it's a bit messy here, t equals the square root of 2 times the vertical displacement, divided by the acceleration. So there's two different ways there we can work out time of flight depending on the situation in the question. Finally, and this is fairly straightforward, the range is basically our horizontal displacement. So displacement, we normally use the symbol H, and a little, sorry, the symbol S, with a little subscript H for horizontal. No force so it acts in the horizontal direction, so there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, so we don't need to worry about the acceleration component of the equations of motion. So SH, as I said, this is our range, is equal to the horizontal component of the velocity, which is constant when we ignore air resistance, times by the time of flight. So that allows us to work out our range once we know the time of flight. We'll look in the next video at um, doing some example problems using this, th these equations using this maths.